are you doing today? Do you feel like doing a little bit of DIYing with me today? Come on in. Let's get started. What have I got going on for you for today? Yeah, you saw that thumbnail correctly. I am DIYing with real fruit today. Not plastic fruit, real fruit. These are DIYs that are so easy to do and the outcome is amazing. And not only are these DIYs that you can use to decorate with, but these are DIYs that would be a great gift to give. I can't wait to show you what I'm gonna do with fruit that you most definitely should try. So I'm gonna quit my gabbing, let's jump into it, and let's do some DIYing with fruit today. Why not? Because that's what we do here. Let's get started. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. Alrighty, so I'm going to start off with oranges, just some regular oranges. I'm going to take a good sharp knife and I am going to slice my oranges. You can do whatever thickness you like. I keep mine about a quarter of an inch thick. You're going to want to keep the skin on it and all parts of this orange that you cut, you're going to want to keep. Nothing is going to be discarded. That is the great part about this is fruit is inexpensive and this DIY is going to be amazing with an amazing outcome. Once you've got those oranges sliced, you are going to need some paper towel. Paper towel is the best for absorbing as much of the moisture as you can because these are a very acidic juicy fruit you want to try and get as much of that moisture out using a paper towel a super absorbent one is probably going to get the job done the best if there's a little bit of moisture that's okay once we've got the moisture out as much as we can get it out i'm going to use one of these cookie sheets that you can get from dollar tree it's a vented one this is one that you definitely want to use or even a cooling rack. Don't have one of those on hand right now, so this is going to work. And I'm going to go ahead and place my sliced fruit on this cookie sheet. Lemons are another great fruit that you can do this DIY with. I found if you're somebody who has a lemon, lime tree, an orange tree, an apple tree, this is a great DIY that will utilize those extra lemons, limes, and oranges that you have year after year that you just don't know what to do with. That maybe you go around your neighborhood and you hand them out. Well, maybe before you hand them out, you're gonna wanna do this DIY and hand this out to some of your neighbors. And again, using some of that super absorbent paper towel with any of the fruits that you do use, in this DIY, you do want to try again and absorb as much of that moisture as you can because it is going to cut down on the time that it takes to do this DIY and you'll see what I mean here in a second. What's great about this is you can do it using apples. Apples are so fun because when you cut them, you've got the core, you've got all those seeds, which is just going to add to the rustic feel of this DIY. You don't want to discard anything on the fruit when you're cutting it because all of it really just adds to it. You're going to utilize all of the pieces of your fruit. Different colored apples are going to give you a different look and a different outcome and believe it or not you're gonna get different scents because they taste differently yes scent does play a role in this but i just love the star that you're getting in the center of these apples look at how cool that is i'm sure some of you have already guessed where i'm going with this but you're gonna have to wait for it because i'm gonna show you what else you can cut up how about a pear I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is an Asian pear. The shape of a pear is so fun. And again, it's gonna give you a different look and feel. We wanna utilize that stem there. Look at how cool that piece looks. Pears are very juicy. So again, you are going to want to make sure that you use the paper towel to absorb as much of that moisture and juice as you can. Oh wait, maybe this pear is an Asian pear. 
Oh my word, I don't know my pears. I know I have a red pear today and this brownish yellow one and it is just going to look amazing because of the different colors. Your oven is needed. I set my oven to 190 degrees. I'm gonna take all the fruit that I have cut up, those lemons, the apples, the pears, the oranges, and I'm going to place them on the rack here. And again, this is at 190 degrees. I'm gonna close this up, let it set for about six to eight hours. It's been a bit. I wanted to check on them, and as you can see, the fruit is starting to dry out and actually dehydrate. And so I probably shouldn't have opened it, but I figured I wanted to see the progress and I wanted to flip it. And you can see that flipping it is definitely the way to go. So you get that even colored, uh, I guess, look as it's drying out. The top is clearly drying out faster than the bottom. So yeah, I suggest flipping it and if you've got a cooling rack, you probably won't need to do that because it's gonna get it from all sides. After about, I wanna say six to eight hours, and you just wanna keep an eye on it, you're gonna see that it is dry. Some of my lemons got a bit darker because they were on the bottom rack. That's okay though, you can see the middle ones turned out perfect, so maybe don't use the bottom rack. This is the first time that I've actually used all three racks at one time, but look at how gorgeous these pears turned out. Who knew it was so easy, right? Just for about six hours. I did grapefruits too. I didn't show cutting it. The brown actually wipes off with a sponge if you want it to, but look at how gorgeous they are. As I was drying these out in the oven, my house smelled so citrusy, fresh. It was amazing. This dried fruit smells amazing too. I did limes and you can see the rind on it is just gorgeous and it still has that green but it's got the brown. These are the lemons and so yeah I say get creative with your fruit and try drawing whatever you want out. Guess what? You can do whole oranges too. And this has an amazing outcome when drying them out. And how you do this is just by cutting slits in eight points of whatever fruit it is, citrus fruit that you're drying out. So you're gonna start off by cutting slits in four points, the top, the bottom, and the sides. Then if you kind of rotate it and do slits in between those four points, you're gonna get the eight slits needed to dry this out. You don't wanna cut all the way through the orange. You wanna cut just enough that you're going all the way through the rind and the pulp. Once you've got your slits in your fruit, again, you're gonna place it on your vented cookie sheet or your cooling rack, and you're just gonna place some whole and these are going to go in the oven. Now, when these go in the oven, I'm not gonna lie to you, you're gonna wanna do it at about 200 degrees and it's gonna take about 18 to 20 hours to fully dry these out. You can use a dehydrator if you have one. I'm not gonna spend the money on one when I can do it in my oven. You will want to rotate your fruit. Now you will see that there are pomegranates in here. Don't do those because they didn't work and it ended up being a hot mess. So I'm gonna close this up and at the end, this is what you are going to be left with. Isn't that gorgeous? Now I made these as ornaments to put on Ray's tree. Look at how pretty those turned out. Not only are these great for ornaments, I'm kind of obsessed with the whole ones, not gonna lie, but these make for great potpourri. Look at how gorgeous this is all together. Now, again, if you have any brown gooey residue from the fruit drying out, you can easily just take a wet sponge and it will wipe off and it'll clean it up. Some of my pieces are a bit dark, but I feel like that's just gonna add to the rustic feel of it, the colored differentiation, I guess, amongst the, lemon, the lemons and the limes. I really like the way it turned out. To make a potpourri out of this, if you just take a cellophane bag, add a few pieces of your potpourri to it, the apples, the pears, the grapefruit, look at how gorgeous those apples turned out, and you just kind of add a bit to it, 
Dollar Tree has an essential oil scent. They've got several different scents. I didn't see the citrus one that I was looking for, but another one of my favorites is the apple and cinnamon, and so that's the one I'm going with. And just by adding a few drops of this to your, I guess, fruit, your dried fruit mix, you will then have a potpourri. Dollar Tree always has the cutest cellophane bags for each of the holidays and the seasons. This gingerbread one was one that I picked up this past Christmas and I did make this during the holiday season and this was a gift that I gifted to the teachers at Allie's school. Taking three of Dollar Tree's wood bead strands, these are just what I think I need to make a new garland. I just took down all of my Christmas decor and I love garlands on my windows and my mantles, so I wanted to make one using all of this fruit. So to do that, I hot glued some twine onto the back instead of poking a hole through the fruit itself because I wanted the fruit to face forward. And so you can do that just by adding a twine, I guess, hanger to the back of it. It's not going to show. Oh, that one's a little sticky. I went ahead and used some regular twine just because this is going to have a bit of weight behind it. Using some of the beads, adding some of the fruit here and there, I am making myself a fun rustic garland. And to this garland, I can add whatever essential oil I want to the fruit just by dripping it onto the fruit and it's gonna make whatever room I have this garland in smell amazing. Now, I know, I know I'm a day late and a penny short or a couple months short, but this was another idea for adding ornaments to the tree just by adding a bit of twine to the back of this. What a budget friendly alternative to the traditional ornaments that you buy at the store. You could just have this amazing citrus smelling rustic tree just by adding twine to the back of these and maybe a bow because you know I like to finish my DIYs off with a twine bow. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? Well, it's going out to Janine, who's bringing to us her recreation of my DIY extracts. Janine, I am loving all the flavors that you made. Looks like you had some fun. Thank you so much for sharing your creation with us today. Dried fruit, amazing, right? How fun is that? I would say the only downfall to this is that it takes forever for the fruit to dry out in the oven. I would assume if you have a dehydrator, it would probably work, but I have an oven. I used my oven and I really had to put those patient pants on, but how many times did I open that oven door just to see the progress? Cause I was so excited about it. Probably a ton, probably slowed it down a bit, but nonetheless, the outcome was fun and this is most definitely a DIY that I'm gonna do more often. I hope you all enjoyed today's DIY fruit garland and potpourri and ornaments. If you're looking for more DIY holiday inspiration, make sure to click on the video right over here and it'll take you to some of my oldie but favorite DIYs. Until next time everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please, because I sure as heck am. Bye for now, everybody.